Hello everybody, Ron aka Daddy Geek here with another Disney Infinity 2.0 toy box tutorial and in this video we're going to look at logic gates. Logic gates are a very powerful new addition to the two, uh, to the 2.0 toy box tutorial. Yeah, uh, toy box tutorial. Oh, great googly moogly. Um, they're a very powerful addition to the 2.0 toy box. Well, they're also a powerful addition to my tutorials too, but that's another story. Anyway, um, what we're going to do in this video is I have three different examples set up. This first example here is going to actually sh help me demonstrate what a logic gate is and what it does. Um, and then I have two more examples of ways you can use the logic gate in your game. Okay, so without any further babbling and stumbling over my own words, let's get on with it. Um, behind me here I have a logic gate toy. And as you can see with the holograph symbol, it's actually the symbol of a partially open gate. And that's a perfect um, it's a it's a perfect icon for um, a logic gate because uh, what a logic gate actually is is it is a a gate or a door that controls the flow of other logic commands from other logic toys. Um, and what I mean by that is the logic gate has three states. Um, it has a open state, which allows the signals that go to enter it to go right through and go to their intended target. It has a closed state, which once the logic gate is closed, it stops all signals from going through it. Okay, and then when the when the logic gate is closed, it also has a uh, side effect of a third state called input block. So when a signal hits a closed gate, it smacks into the gate, it's closed, and then it bounces off. Think about if you had a door and it was closed and locked shut, and you ran full force into that door. Besides having a headache, you're also going to bounce off of that door. And the same thing applies here. If you have a closed logic gate, any signals that hit it are going to be stopped and actually they're going to be, they can be bounced. Uh, they don't have to be bounced, but you can actually bounce that signal and redirect it to another logic toy. And by having certain combinations of logic connections and setups, you can really um, control the flow of logic. And that's what a logic gate does. Now logic gate also has two signals that it accepts. It accepts an input signal and then we also have the opposite of that, an output signal. So those are your signals that are actually going to, you know, go to your different logic toys. And now depending on what state your logic gate is in will depend on what happens with those signals. And I'm going to demonstrate that visually here. What we have is we have one of the most simplest logic connections in the game, which is just a, a simple logic connection from a pressure plate, from a trigger, to a party cannon. I mean everybody's done this because just party cannons are fun. So what happens is you step on the switch, the party cannon fires off. Now the reason why it fires off is because we've made a logic connection. We've actually given a command to the game and told it that when we step on this switch we want the party cannon to fire off. And that's all logic is. Logic is just commands. It's just you're just telling the game what to do. You're just using toys to issue those commands. So now we have um, another party cannon over here, back there behind the logic gate, and this middle switch, when we step on it, will activate the party cannon. However, instead of a, of a direct connection from the switch to the party cannon, we first have it going to the logic gate. Now I have a door over here, just to show you what state the logic gate's in. It's, it's connected as well, so if I open the logic gate, the door will open. If I close it, the door will close. So you can see what happens. So what we're going to do first, is we're going to step on the switch and we're going to open the logic gate. The logic gate is now open. So watch what happens when we step on the switch. There goes the fireworks. Simple enough, right? Well, now we're going to stop and we're going to close the logic gate. We close the door. We close the logic gate. Now watch what happens. We step on the switch. Nothing happens. Why? We close the logic gate. We stop the signal. We stop the flow of logic. We stop the signal from going through. So you can jump up and down on this, step on it all day long. Nothing's going to happen because we have that logic gate closed. That signal's getting stopped. So now we can actually, so we'll do that one once again real quick. Open the gate. You'll see that the party cannon can fire off. The signal's not blocked. The gate's wide open. Now we're going to slam that gate shut. The signal has nowhere to go right now. It's blocked. So you, your, your party cannon will never fire off. Okay, what we can do though is if you remember I said that the, once you have the gate closed, you create another state called input block. And we can take that blocked signal and bounce it off of the logic gate, bounce it off the door, and redirect that signal to whatever logic toy we choose. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to take that signal, 
we're going to connect to our logic gate. We're going to do a new logic connection. Input blocked. And we're going to connect it to this party cam. And we're going to fire that one off. So when the gate is closed and the signal's blocked, instead of going to the original cannon, that signal's going to be redirected, bounced to the other cannon. So first let's open the gate. There goes the fireworks. Now we're going to close the gate. And instead of the signal just getting blocked and doing nothing, it's getting redirected to the other cannon. And there it goes. And that is a very uh, basic, but it's a very a uh, proper explanation of what a logic gate does. I mean, that's exactly what it does. It, it either opens or closes, allowing the signal to go through or to be, to be blocked, and once you block that signal, you can redirect it elsewhere. And that is pretty much the uh, best uh, basic explanation that I can give for it. Um, if you just remember, uh, the logic gate is just that a gate that you can open and close. I think it will really help you um, find uses for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you a perfect example of using a logic gate. Um, what we have here is we have a um, door. And the door can only be opened if the player goes and collects a key. So say in your toy box you have a, a door and you don't want the player to get through it until they go you know, somewhere else in your toy box, fight a bunch of enemies, and grab a key. Um, we're going to use a logic gate to tell the game whether or not when to open that door. Basically. Just like we did with the fireworks cannon, how we had a, you know, you can have a direct signal from a switch or trigger to the cannon. Well, same thing here. You could have a direct signal from this trigger area to the door, so when the player enters the trigger area, the door would open. Well, we're going to do that, but instead, we're going to tell the game when to allow that signal to travel to the door and open, and when to keep it closed. So, what we have is we have a trigger area, a door, we also have a key. And then we need four logic toys here. We need a logic gate, a collectibles tracker, a counter, and then a text uh, creator. So what we're doing is, is we're setting up the game to know when the player has a key, they can open the gate uh, or open the door. When the player does not have a key, the door will remain closed. All right, so the very first thing we need to do is we need to set up our input and our output, So which is our signal. So we got the trigger area, a new logic connection from there, enter, player, any to the logic gate and we're going to say input so this is our signal instead of going directly to the door first we're going to the logic gate we're going to do an output we had an input so now we need an output we're going to do a new logic connection output and we're going to take that to the door because that is our final destination for our our final intended destination for our signal so we're going to do open So now when we walk through here, the default state of a logic gate is always open. So we walk in, the door will open. Simple enough, right? And let's see, can I get that door to close back? I might have to read, I might have to delete the door because I don't have a, anything to uh, close the door back shut. So let's delete that door. Just wanted to show you what I meant. Let's delete that door real quick. Sorry about that. I shouldn't have done that. And let's throw another door down. That wasn't very bright of me. So we'll toss that back down. Sorry about that. And we're going to reconnect the door. All we need to do is just reconnect the output from the logic gate. New logic connection, output to the door. And we're going to do open. Some days, I'll tell you. All right. Never give a hillbilly logic toys. Okay. Um, anyway, now we need to tell the game what kind of uh, collectible will open the door. So what we need to tell the game what kind of uh, what the you know what the track. So in this case, we're going to tell the game the track how many keys the player has. So what we do is we need a collectibles tracker. We're going to bring up the properties. And by default, it's, it's set to all. So we want to actually tell it what type of collectible, or in this case, key, we need the player to, to collect in order to open the door. So we'll go down here to uh, kill and key card. They call it a key card. It looks like a key. Don't know what, why it says card, but hey. Um, and you can get this from playing the um, Escape the escape the kiln toy box, escape from kiln uh, something like that. All right, so <laughs> kiln key card, not important. Um, and now we're going to do new logic connection, and we're going to do collectible collected by. Now, out of force of habit, you might want to automatically say Ooh, select player because you know when we put down switches and other trigger areas, usually we do triggered by, by a player because we don't want NPCs triggering things off. 
In this case, we want any simply because we want to have it set up for multiplayer. So whether player one or three picks up the key, it will the game will keep track of it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do any, and we're going to do a connection to the counter, and we're going to keep track of how many keys the player picks up. So every time the player picks up a key, it's going to increase the counter by one. Makes sense, right? All right, so now what we need to do is we need to actually set up um, whether or not the, um, what happens when the player doesn't have the key. And then we also need to set up when the player does have the key. So we made our basic connections here. Now we need to make it all work. We need to connect it together and make the logic make sense. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to do a uh, connection from our counter. We're going to do new logic connection. We're going to do zero reached. What zero reach means is that the player has zero. They, they don't have a single collectible. They got a big goose egg. Nothing. That is going to be the signal we're going to use to tell the uh, logic gate, keep that door closed. The player doesn't have a key. They have zero. So we want them to keep the door closed. So we're going to make that connection to the logic gate and we're going to say close. You don't have a key, slam that gate shut, stop that door from being open. So now we're going to need to do the exact opposite. We need to tell the game, hey, if the player has a key, open the gate, open the door. So to do that, we're going to go from the collectibles tracker new logic connection, collectible collected by, once again, any, and we're going to tell it to open. And now since we told the collectible tracker to collect to only track the keys, only when a player collects a key will they open that gate. Now the door won't open yet. The door won't open until the player actually enters the uh, trigger area, but we've opened the logic gate so that the signal can, can go through. Now the next thing we need to do though is we need to take the key away from the player um, once they, we need to take the key away from the player once they have come, you know, opened the door with the key. We need to remove it from the count. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a new logic connection from the gate. We're going to do new logic connection, output. Now if you remember, the output originally goes to the door and it tells the door to open. So since we're opening the door, since the only way to open that door is through an output, we're going to do the same kind of connection, an output to the collectibles tracker and we're going to do decrement by one. Player uses the key. The key is what creates, is allows the output to happen and it goes back to the tracker as well and says take away that key. Now if you remember we also had an input block state. So what we're going to do here is um, we're going to add just a little bit of flair to this. We're going to use a uh, text creator to tell the player if they, end, if they walk up to the door without a key we're going to tell the player hey you need to go collect the key. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a connection from the logic gate, new logic connection, this time input blocked. What happens when the logic gate is uh, closed? The input's blocked. So we're going to redirect that signal to the text creator. Input blocked, text creator, display text one. And I have already set this up ahead of time to where it says um, banner and it says you need a key. So basically we're just saying, hey, you know, hey player, you need a key. Okay, and then that is it. So we have all of our logic connections set up. We don't need to do anything physically with a key. It just has to be in our uh, in our toy box, and that is it. And then I'll show. You. We can take this one step further, but I'll show you that after we actually uh, use the door. So let's go over here and let's try it out. And the door opened, and it's not supposed to. That happens once in a while. If that happens, oops. If that happens, delete. And I did it again. Delete the door. Put the door back down and make that final logic connection. I'm not exactly sure why this happens. It could be a bug. I'm not sure, but this doesn't happen every time. But once in a while, it does, and of course, it does while I'm making a video. Because why wouldn't it? I'll put to the door, and I'm gonna do open. Why that happened, I'm not sure. I could even be doing something wrong, but it's not a hundred percent always will will uh, fail like that. So now it should work. We walk up, ta-da, you need a key. Door doesn't open. You can walk back and forth here all day long. You need a key, and nothing will happen. Let's go collect the key. You see the one a pop popped up. Our collectible tracker is keeping track of the fact that we have a key. Let's go into here, ta-da, open, and we get a big zero, a goose egg. And also you notice that the, um, you'll also notice that the uh, text didn't fire off. That's because the signal was no longer blocked. 
the gate was now in the open instead of in, uh, instead of a closed state, so therefore that text will not fire off. Now you can take this one step further, and you can make a logic connection from your gate to new logic connection output to the trigger area, and tell it to deactivate. If you want the door to open only one time, and be a one-time thing, once the uh, player has the key, they open the gate with the key, the key will be taken away, and also the logic gate will turn off that trigger area, so you no longer have to worry about the player walking through it with or without a key. You know, it, it's it's not necessary, not necessary in this instance, because really, once you use the key and open the door, the door will stay open, you never have to worry about it again, but it's just that extra step that you can take to, to ensure that the logic is finally over. There's no uh, broken or missed logic floating around in your toy box. If you if you watch my previous videos and some of them you've seen that I've done this before, use the logic gate to turn off uh, trigger areas so they don't fire off multiple times. Okay, we're going to go over here and we're going to do one more um, one more example, but this time we're going to use color plates. Okay, so in this last example here, we are going to um, use these color changing pressure plates to have the player enter the correct combination of colors to turn off the laser grid behind us here um, that's in, you know, in the hallway. But what we're going to do is we're going to test something out together here. I'm going to delete this laser grid and we're going to replace it once we are completely done setting up this um, example. Because um, just a few seconds ago that door that we tried to do um, at first didn't work and we had to delete the door and replace it. And I'm wondering if... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Wow, um, apparently I got a hairball. Um, anyway, we, um, you know, my idea here is if we delete this uh, laser grid and place it last as our very last uh, connection, uh, place it in the toy box last, maybe that's the problem. I'm not, I'm not certain. We'll find out together. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to set up uh, these uh, color changing plates, which you can find if you play through the um, Escape from Kiln toy box. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so when the player enters the correct color, which is going to be, uh, we'll do blue, green, and red. That will turn off the laser grid that's in the hallway there. And the, the way we accomplish that is by using the logic gates. And what we're going to do is when we have the player, when the player selects the correct color, it's going to close that gate. And it's going to create that input block state. And when the signal tries to go through the gate, it's going to get bounced like dominoes down the line down each logic gate until it reaches the end. So if all the gates are closed, the correct color is on for each plate, all the gates will be closed, the signal will continue to bounce, and then that last logic gate, we're going to bounce that signal off over to, logic, uh, over to the laser grid and turn off the laser grid. So in order to accomplish all this, you need to put down as many pressure plates, uh, many color changing plates as you want for color. So in this case, we just want three. We want just um, uh, blue, green, red. You could have five here and do all five colors in a certain order. You can do more than five and have, um, honestly, if you do it set it up this way, you can probably have an infinite amount of color changing plates um, and have as many combinations as you wish. Um, and we uh, So we need a logic gate for each one of those color changing plates and we also need a timed layer, which again, if you watch my previous videos, you know that that's one of my favorite toys. All right, so let's get started. Let's make these connections. First thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up the properties of our uh, color changing plate. And if you look at the properties, you'll see that you have number of colors, which you can choose how many colors the plate cycles through. Um, five is the max, and it's the default, and we're going to leave it at that, but you can knock it down to have it only cycle through three colors or whatever uh, best suits your uh, setup. Uh, random sequence. <clears throat> Pardon me, I apologize. The uh, the default sequence for these color changing plates are um, they are blue, orange, green, purple, and red. So every plate's always, if you leave it at default, you're going to step on it and it's always going to go through that color. So when a player steps on the burst color, it's always going to be blue. Now if you change this to random, it'll be random. It'll be, players could step on it and the first color pop-up could be red. It's, so you can randomize and make it a little bit more different. Um, effect of type, um, match team on contact, um, that means if you step on the plate, if you have this turned on, you stepped on the plate, the plate turns blue, you're going to be assigned to the blue team. Um, sequence includes offsetting. That allows you to use the default setting, which you see in front of us here, the offsetting, as part of your combination. Um, by default, that's off, and we're going to leave it off because we just, you know, 
make our we'll have to make less connections that way so we can speed this up a little bit all right so we're gonna leave everything at default but I just wanted to show you the properties and we're gonna do a new logic connection we're gonna do turn blue we don't want to do stepped on because this isn't just your typical pressure plate we want to um, select the correct color first that we want to use so in this case we want the correct color for this pressure plate to be blue so we're gonna do turn blue connect it to our logic gate and we're gonna say close because we want the correct color to close the logic gate because again once we have this logic gate closed we're gonna create a signal that's gonna bounce down uh, each logic gate and as long as those gates are closed the signal is gonna continue to bounce until it finally reaches its destination which will be the laser grid okay now here's where uh, people might run into problems when they're setting this up you can't just make the logic connection for the correct color you also have to make the logic connection for the incorrect colors or else none of this will work so what you gotta do is make another uh, make another connection from your logic uh, yeah your logic gate your uh, pressure plate new logic connection and now you need to make connections for all the other colors so we're gonna do orange and we're gonna do open because if you open the gate then that signal instead of being bounced is just gonna just travel directly through the gate and just travel on to infinity or unless we assign it you know unless we connect that output signal to something else but right now we're opening the circuit think of it as a circuit if we keep the circuit closed we're gonna bounce that signal all the way down the line like we want to until it reaches its final destination but if the player selects the wrong color they're gonna open that circuit up they're gonna open the logic gate and that signal is just gonna pass right on through to infinity and it's just so it's gonna break the circuits and not no longer gonna bounce the laser grid won't, won't turn off okay so we did so now we gotta do it for each color so new logic connection green back to the gate and once again open and we're just gonna repeat this for all the colors And then we're just going to repeat the process for each plate, but changing the color that is the correct color. So in this case, we want to do green. So we're going to go new logic connection, green, and we're going to do close. Always do your, always do the correct color first. That way you know for a fact that the correct color is going to close the gate, and then assign all your incorrect colors afterwards. I just found it makes things much easier that way. Once again, we're going to do a new logic connection for all the other colors, but we're just going to tell it to open the gate. Okay, now that we did that, we need to set up the signal and get it to bounce down the logic gate. So what we're going to do is for each logic gate, what you want to do is you want to do new logic connection, and you want to do you want to do the um, the close action. So when the gate is closed, we're going to send a signal to the delayer to start the delay, and we're going to do that for every gate. New logic connection, close. We're going to start the delay. So now every time the player steps on the correct color, it's going to close the gate, and the gate in turn is going to start the delay, which is only, we're leaving it at default, it's only like a second delay. And now what we're going to do is once that delay is completed, we're going to do new logic connection, delay completed, we're going to go back to our logic gates here, maybe. Okay, anyway, sorry, this is not going well today. Uh, lost connection to my infinity base. Today was apparently not the correct day to record. Okay, so anyway... Let's get rid of that. What we're going to do is we need, now that we set up, um, now we set up a close action from each gate to the start to delay, we're going to have that delay get completed. Okay, you're going to do a new logic connection, delay complete, take it to the very first logic gate, and do input. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do an input block all the way down the line and have the signal bounce. So we're going to go new logic connection from the first gate, input blocked to the second gate. And we're going to do input. Same thing here, we're going to do new logic connection, input block, and we're going to do input to the next logic gate. And then from here, let's bring out our laser grid.
we're going to take that input block signal and we're going to take it to its final destination which will be the laser grid and we're going to say turn it off so now what happens is again when you get the correct color it's going to close the gate so if each gate has a correct color each gate is going to be closed when the gates are closed a signal gets sent to the time delayer to start the delay the delay as soon as it's completed sends a signal back to the logic gate and it sends an input well since the gates closed it's going to hit the hit the gate we're going to get that input block state and we're just redirecting the signal we're bouncing the signal down the line until it hits the um, final destination which is the laser grid now if the player hits the wrong color the gate's going to be open the circuit's going to be broken it's going to be wide open the signal's just going to travel straight through instead of getting redirected to the um, laser grid so let's see if this goes correctly so we need blue green and then red so there's blue and we need red so hopefully when we hit red this works and it didn't yes it did there it goes yay it's just a little bit of delay and that is it now we have used really need a cheer com uh, I should have used an action enforcer and made him cheer when that happened um, that's it we use the um, logic gates we use the uh, color changing plates the logic gates and plates see Ryan you're welcome I do a lot you're very welcome anyway um, we use the um, the combination of logic gates and the plates to turn off the gate oh come on people we use the logic gates and plates to turn off the gate ah, okay. anyway actually it's a grid so actually I failed anyway I'm getting a little loopy and people are going to be like uh, seriously so anyway that should cover a logic gate that pretty much gives you two examples of the gate and hopefully that first example was um, a decent enough example to tell you uh, explain to you how the gate logic gates work and that is it you know what that was epically failure we're going to have to do a lot of heavy editing here okay okay <laughs> so that's pretty much the best uh, that's pretty much uh, it for this video uh, we had some examples of how the logic gate works um, also I hope that first example helped explain what a logic gate is um, and as always thank you for watching I hope this helped you and we'll see you in the next video which will actually be um, dealing with satellites until then take care bye bye